Blesse mon cœur d'une langueur monotone. Je répète. Blesse mon cœur d'une langueur monotone. Hey everybody, Dutch Sense here. 10.54 p.m. Central Time on Sunday, May 4th, 2014. And we're looking at Earthquake 3D here, which is a USGS feed of the most recent earthquakes. And I've got it turned down for the last seven days. We're looking at everything 2.5 and greater in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and Alaska, and 4.0 and greater internationally. The higher the earthquakes are off the globe, the deeper they are in the Earth. And I've put out several posts today covering this topic, the deep earthquakes, and also a troubling new trend that's actually happened over the past several days now, a series of earthquakes happening around the entire Ring of Fire and in the U.S. occurring at dormant volcanic chains and newly fresh lavic fields. This is all documented. I've provided screenshot proof of each location, and we're going to go into each one really quick, and I'll explain what I think is going on here. Now, right off the bat, if you were to come to my website, you'd see that the top post is dealing with Japan, and Japan just had two back-to-back 6.0 earthquakes happen right in between volcanic areas. Took screenshots of that, and we got 11 miles in one direction, 11 miles in the other. You've got volcanoes in each direction. So, it's not far of a distance. This is definitely volcanic-related, and this is not the only earthquake that occurred this past week in Japan that was volcanic-related. We documented another one here, which was surrounded by five volcanoes. It was happening right in the middle of five different volcanoes, and we're talking a small cluster just a few miles apart. So we have two back-to-back earthquakes in Japan that are volcanic-related. Also, a series of deep earthquakes happening inside of the asthenosphere, and I've put out some diagrams here. Here's the West Pacific showing two deep earthquakes happening, and that's happening roughly at 300 to 350 miles down, This is semi-melted magma that the plates rest on top of. And so this movement that's occurring, this large disturbance that's happening, that's causing all of this unrest, appears to be happening at a deep level, and it appears to be ongoing, hence my video today. So this activity that's occurring here, let me take you back to the diagram. You can look at the edge of the North American plate and see that some of the earthquakes are occurring along the actual defined edge that includes this magma chamber up here in Yellowstone all the way down to the fracking operations, and this is confirmed fracking earthquakes, where we have weak spots in the crust now due to drilling and injection. Some would call it wastewater, but we would inject that water deep down into the earth and fracture gas out of the plate. That's causing a large amount of earthquakes to happen, unfortunately, and that was unexpected, and that's because of the pressure coming from the opposite direction they would normally expect it to come from. You can clearly see it here, Salton Sea to the south, dormant volcanoes in the middle of California, and new fresh lava fields confirmed by the USGS off the northwest coast. And you don't have to take my word for it, American Geophysical Union, USGS, their sensors were buried. They got out there with submarines and looked at the new lava flows that happened out there in 2011 and 2012. Now this magma chamber earthquake here happening at Idaho, there's something I gotta show you guys. First of all, again, it is confirmed that that's the magma chamber. It extends far west into Idaho. You again don't have to take my word for it. The American Geophysical Union has provided all of the uh, data. And if you guys are staying up to date on this, I'm probably just speaking to the choir here. And I've put this out several times. You can see it extending west into Idaho, uh, the magma plume of Yellowstone extending out of the park here, west through Idaho. And we have semi-melt going pretty much halfway through the state of Idaho. It also goes very deep. So let's go actually look up the earthquake or earthquakes that are occurring at this location. Now I've done this before and I didn't see much out there, but I didn't take, I believe, the appropriate time to look up and find out what's there. I really am kind of blown away by what I found and I want to just go ahead and show you. Uh, It's really easily done. I just pulled the coordinates from the USGS there, and we'll go ahead and paste them in here on Google Earth. And we'll zoom in on the area. Now, first of all, we've got volcanoes down here to the south by about 45 to 50 miles. That's Craters of the Moon and Hell's Half Acre. I've personally been to Craters of the Moon. It's 
pretty interesting park with a lot of volcanic rifts and activity associated with the prior eruptions at Yellowstone. It's a weak spot in the crust there. So here's the earthquake. Now we've had a cluster of earthquakes. If we were to look at all the earthquakes that happened here, you'd see a swarm that happened here around this hillside, going down this hillside over here to the north. And if we back this out, we've got the mountain names turned on. You can see it's Red Butte. Now this is a butte just like the other buttes that we've been talking about, and it's Salton Sea buttes to the south, let's say. These are volcanic buttes. These are not just regular weathered down mountains. They're volcanic associated. Red Butte here. Now, interestingly enough, if you were to go down my website from a week ago, there's this collapse that happened at Jackson, Wyoming, south of Yellowstone. And that is a butte as well. Now they're reporting now that that butte fractured and that it's just a localized event. It's not related to rain, though. They made sure to clarify that as well. It's not related to precipitation, that the butte fractured, it's normal, it settles out over time, whatever. That's the explanation now given. So now here's a butte right here to the north, and we've got activity on an unnamed butte here to the south. You'll see the imagery date down here was updated on October 25th, 2013. These are very high resolution pictures. So let me just zoom in here. And let me tell you what I noticed. I noticed that the rock that's here at the site is somewhat igneous. It is um, either basalt or we're talking about some kind of lavic rock at the location. Now there's sparse vegetation, but you can really zoom in on some of this. And this is a real giveaway right here. The dark discoloration and then the flow down the side of the dark colored rock. Let me zoom in here and you'll see the reds and blacks. You can really make this out that this is probably some kind of very weathered lavic flow. And these are all over the place. You don't have to take my word for it out there. But let's just zoom back in. And you guys are not going to believe what I found while I was reviewing the area. First of all, we've got a forest servicery road that goes down here in the valley. And of course, it goes out to a more of a main road here. There's no actual direct route up to this. This is actually in the back country. So I decided to look up how to get there in case I had to go myself. <laughs> and uh, I found a little trail that comes off of the road and it goes up the hillside. Looks like it's been used in the past year or two, but it stops right here. Okay, you see that there, the road doesn't go any further. It then looks like you would have to go on foot from this location. All right. So why stop there? Why would you only have a road going to there? Well, if you go up further up the mountain, look at this. An older road that hasn't been used in a very long time. And off the road are spots where it looks like you can park and it looks like there's a trail that go comes out from the road. So let me zoom in here and show you the footpaths that exist. We've got a large amount of footpaths. These aren't just fractures. And look where it goes to. Okay, if I, I don't need to tell you what that is. That is some kind of old mine. Okay, and if you want to have a real interesting time, you can follow this trail all the way back here to the backcountry, and you'll find more locations that look like this. Some kind of old mining operation exists here on this hillside. However, you can't really get to it. USGS might not even know it's there. It might be one of these unmarked old mines from a long time ago and you only drive up here, you'd have to really know and see that. To see that from down here at this ground level, it's just going to look like another divot. And this landslide, again, look at this. Let me rotate this a little bit. You can really tell that this was some kind of landslide, um, and it's it, probably some kind of igneous or basalt rock just by the coloring, the black and the red. And of course, up in Idaho, that's not uh, too rare, of course. So that's a pretty interesting little discovery. Definitely got a mine there on the backside of the mountain. Now, is there something going on at a deep level? Yes, for sure, confirmed. They've put it out this past week that the magma chambers are recharging in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, they said there's no risk for an eruption, which I agree, there is no risk for an eruption right now. However, the rise in magma, here's Yellowstone, two inch rise in four months. Mainstream media confirming here Mount St. Helens, a rise 
new magma in the chamber. Here's Jackson Hole with the butte that fractured just south of Yellowstone. Here's Washington State with the huge landslide that occurred that unfortunately all those people were buried. Again, we're talking about the same regions here, folks. So the landslides that are occurring and the collapses that are happening are due to the movement. The, we're seeing a lot of movement happen in a short amount of time. And for instance, here's the dormant volcanoes that showed. This was yesterday or on Friday night. Here's a clearly dormant volcanic butte. This is even marked on Google Earth, and it definitely had earthquake activity. This is Mono Lake up here to the north. That was followed up today by another earthquake, which the LA Times ran a story on, which occurred just west a few miles of Mammoth Mountain. And of course, we've got Mono Lake, the main supervolcano in the area. And it is a supervolcano, confirmed that it used to be a supervolcano. Hasn't erupted in a very long time, but it's similar in the size and scope that you would see at Yellowstone. Now we're not worried about an eruption, guys. Let me just stress that again. We're worried about a large earthquake and the area that you would need to probably watch would be somewhere in the region that is experiencing the large amount of volcanic activity associated with dormant volcanoes. So you can see the area, you can see the 3.0 activity over the last seven days. That's the area to watch and it would be somewhere where the cluster point is occurring here. Now let's hope that's wrong, let's hope things calm down. However, we're watching, personally, south to Salton Sea, Baja, Mexico has been strangely silent over all of this current activity. It's remained quiet. Get back over here to Earthquake 3D, you can see it. Last seven days of earthquakes, right in here, silence. A Lot of activity to the north, including the 6.8s, up here that are not on the map anymore over a week ago at British Columbia in Northern California. I cannot stress this enough folks, have an earthquake plan ready and be prepared just in case. The reason I'm trying to show you the volcanic activity, I'm trying to let you know what's going on. The unrest that's happening around the Pacific is having a spillover effect and a plate effect now due to the asthenosphere and it's causing things like plumes to erupt out of ste out of geothermal wells. This was confirmed on the mainstream media this past week. Geothermal wells blowing in Southern California at Salton Sea. It was caught on visible satellite. Everybody said it was a brush fire and then the mainstream media came out and confirmed it. Brawley geothermal well blows. The time to have a plan is now. You can just make basic preparations, food, water, transportation, communications. Make sure you, your kids, your coworkers, your employees know the plan.